Hi campers, this is Darren with My RV Works. We're in Carlsburg, Washington today. And you're probably wondering, Darren, what the heck are you doing up on the roof? Well, I have something for you. I have a ref an air conditioner. I almost said refrigerator. <laughs> so customer states that this refrigerator comes on. See, I said refrigerator, didn't I? This is an air conditioner, folks. Okay, customer states that the refrigerator, oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, let's just establish that every time I say a refrigerator, I mean air conditioner. It's been a long day. Customer states that every that when he turns on his air conditioner that is just blowing hot air, the compressor is not engaging, it's not blowing cold. Okay, I've not taken the cover off, so I wanted you to see, and I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna be looking for as we troubleshoot this air conditioner and uh, get this camper cooled down so he can become another happy camper. So here we go, we're gonna follow the trail. Here we go, we're going hunting. Okay, so folks, we're gonna take this cover off. Okay, now, I'm always nervous when I take these covers off because there may be a wasp nest under here. Uh, sometimes I might even come up here with a can of wasp spray. So, just be advised, if you take your cover off, there may be a wasp nest under it, okay? Okay, as advertised, he's not there, he's dormant, but there was a wasp nest under here, so just be advised. Little um, orientation here. Um, we're gonna be taking this cover off. These are the screws that are gonna check our compressor. Okay, I'm gonna tell you how to check your compressor. Um, fan spinning, capacitors and whatnot are gonna be in the air. We're also gonna check some capacitors. Here's another little friendly wasp nest. Okay, this whole cover just lifts right off like that. Okay, now this would be a Dometic. All right, uh, it's gonna be a Dometic, whatever that says, it's too bright for me to see. So with everything exposed like this, we can now start diagnosing. So I'm gonna set you up on a tripod. Let's start checking our compressor. So if the compressor is not engaging, there are several things that we could check and you have to make a judgment call on what you're gonna check first. Is it the control board inside, which we'll get to, where you have a stuck relay? Um, is it the thermostat? Is it the compressor itself? And so you have to make a decision on where you're going to start your troubleshooting. Personally, me, I like to come up on the roof and check up on the roof because I'm going to make the biggest splash. Okay. So when I'm up on the roof, I'm going to check to make sure that the motor's spinning. We're going to go in here and we're going to check this compressor. I'm looking at other things. So by coming up here and spending a few minutes, yes, we're going to check the compressor. It may or may not be the problem, but haven't I also checked a whole bunch of other things? So well, that's why I like starting up at the top. Uh, I'm gonna take this screw off and we're going to see some wires on here and I will explain what they do. And I'll even probably draw a little groovy picture with some, some math, very exciting math. If you like math puzzles, you'll love these. So we're gonna take this off, okay? Now what do we have here? We have this little guy right here. He's a, what is it, RGBT or something along those lines. Basically what this guy does is he is a switch that turns on and off based off of amperage, okay? So when the amperage is low, he allows power to flow, and when the amperage gets high, he turns that power off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our meter, and we're gonna, it doesn't matter what the ohms reading is, but we wanna make sure that this is going to allow current to flow through this little guy right here, okay? So we're gonna take our meter. I'm going to check. Now, another thing I'm looking for is any wires that might be melted on the top of this thing. Uh, you might see, typically it's the red wire, but I've also seen the blue wire. They're gonna be a little melty. Okay, so I'm gonna go to AC volts, and I would be very interested to find out if, I want a good ground here, so I'm gonna pierce that. I'm just gonna check. I expect all these to be off. They're all dead, okay. So I'm still gonna touch them. So what I would like to do now what tool does Darren like to use to take off these things? How about this little hook right here? So what we're going to do is we're going to get in there, just kind of pry this little jewel right off. Uh, there we go. Got him a little loose. There. Okay. And then we're going to... So, oh, looky there. Look, can you see that dark spot? Where's the camera at? Where, where are you? Okay, so that dark spot, it's an indication that it got a little bit too hot. Okay, a little dark spot right there. 
Um, so everything might be fine, but by coming up on the roof, look what I just found. So with this guy, again, he's a switch that works on amperage. As the amperage increases, the switch opens up. Okay, so all I wanna do is I wanna verify that, that I have continuity through this, okay? Because my amperage is so low right now, it's at zero, that I should be able to pass current through this thing. So I always like to go in on the back. I can't hear, so I'm gonna go in on the front and I'm listening for a beep on my meter. There, therefore, that component is good. It doesn't really matter. It, in this instance, it was uh, no resistance. Let's check again. Okay, I got zero resistance. So this is good. This component's good. That's how you test those. Okay, now we're going to unplug all these connectors here. Okay, and now let's check our compressor. On this, you have an S for start, R for run, and C for common. Okay, so let me draw you a picture and show you what we're going to try to do here. Here's a groovy math. Okay, so there's one screw terminal. Here's another, that's a, not a screw terminal. It's, no, my pin's not gonna work. So if I were to look at the top of my compressor, I'm gonna see these three studs coming up, right? Of course, you got it stood up on the roof. Here's common, that was a joke. Uh, here's, let's just call this start, and let's call this run, okay? Um, that, okay, now let's just draw a little coil between common and start. Let's draw a coil between common and run and let's draw a coil between run and start. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reference common to run, I'm gonna write down the ohms reading, I'm gonna reference common to start, I'm gonna write down the ohms reading, and guess what? These two start to run should equal these two. Does that make sense? So here we go, I'm gonna count it off. Common to start, I've got 3.2 ohms, okay? So common to start, I'm gonna write 3.2, 3.2, okay? Common to run. 0.5. Okay. 0.5. Common to run is 0.5. So 3.2 plus 0.5 is 5 plus 2 is 7. This should be 3.7, right? Between here? Let's see what we got. Between run and start, 3.6. That's close enough to 3.7. Therefore, the windings within the compressor are fine. Wasn't that fun? Now there's one more test I'm gonna do, which I do not expect to fail. I'm gonna check each one of these pins to ground. And I'm just gonna, you know, I'll, I'll check it. I want a good ground here. Okay, I got no beep, I got no beep, I got no beep. Therefore, we just checked our compressor, didn't we? Our compressor is fine. So the problem is not with the compressor. The problem is not with this thing. I think it's an RGBT or that might be a variable frequency drive I'm thinking of. It's something. All these components are good. I'm a little concerned about this melting, but the everything looks fine. So we're gonna put him back on, okay? Wasn't that fun? Okay, we're gonna connect our, our white there. Blue's gonna go here. It's just, it didn't shock me, but it is a little hot. Where is that shocking me? Wow, okay. Disconnect your power, note to self. Especially when you're up on the roof. Do as I say, don't do as I do. Okay, so we know our compressor is fine, right? Because we just checked the components. So where's my cap? Here we are. So it's not the compressor, folks. Just like that, we just checked our compressor. Two components out of the woods. We've also turned our motor. We know it's not the um, the motor. Now we're gonna go over there and check our, compa our ca capacitor. Okay, and tighten that. So compressor is good. Let's go over to the other side where we have our capacitors and let's check the capacitor. Okay, folks, so I've moved you around over here to the capacitor. Uh, just to give you an orientation, let me wiggle you around. Okay, we were we were over, over there on that side and now that's your capacitor. Now, a word of caution, do not touch this thing because it will shock the hmm, manure out of you. It could actually do a lot of damage to you. Um, they do have these uh, capacitor discharge um, tools. I have one. I don't have it with me. I did not think to bring it. Uh, the funny thing is when I'm up here, we don't get a lot of air conditioner calls, uh, surprisingly. When we had our business down in Texas, 80% of our business was air conditioner calls. But up here, we don't get that many air conditioner calls. So I don't 
carry all the tools that I could have, should have, would have had. So this center pin, so this capacitor is like a combo, if you will. So all my neutrals are on this center pin. So I'm going to go ahead and pull them off. Doesn't matter which pin they're on. Okay. Okay. So we're going to move them out of the way. They're all white. All right. The one on the right is red, right, red. Remember that right, red. Okay. And then I have one on the, the, the left, which is brown. He's going to go to the motor. Okay. Let's pull him off top. Now my arm's probably in your face. Uh, trying some new deodorant. You should like it. Okay. There we go. So now we're all disconnected and, um, insulated tools, uh, get the discharge capacitor tool. Do what I say, do what I say. Don't do what I do. So I'm going to just short these out. Okay. So they're all shorted out. Okay. Now on the side here, let me disconnect you and show you what I'm looking at. Hold on. I'm going to take you for a ride. Okay, here we are. Now, what is this telling us? 60 plus five microfarads plus or minus 5%. See that 60 and that five? I want us to remember that 60 and that five, right? 60 and five, okay? Put you back up on the tripod, here we go. Okay, 60 plus five. So we're gonna take our meter. We're gonna go to the capacitor. There you are. The capacitor is the one that looks, if we go like this, looks like a T and then that side looks like an umbrella. I don't know. But over here we have microfarads. Okay. So we're going to put him here. Now, what was that number? Anybody? Anybody? Oh yeah. 60 plus five. Uh, I want you to see this when it does it. So can you see that? Hold on. Uh, how about that? All right. Hold on. Let me, let me leave that there. Let me move you so you can see. There we are. Perfect. So what we're gonna do, we're in the capacitor mode and I'm just gonna touch this guy right here and this guy right here and you hold and you hold and look, what does the number say? Five. And that's what one of the numbers was, right? What was the other number? 60. So now I'm gonna go to the center and I'm gonna go to the other guy. Hold it, hold it, hold it. 59.6, that's close enough to 60, right? Therefore, our capacitor is fine. It passed the test, right? See how we did that? You read on the side what the microfarad rating is, you get a meter that's got capacitor mode, and then you touch the pins, and you might need to wait. You might need to read it. So I've got a 5 and a 60, plus or minus 5%, so 59.6, close enough to 60. So we've just tested our capacitor. Our capacitor is fine. There's nothing wrong with that capacitor. Nothing wrong with our compressor. I do not see any leaks. I do not see any oily residue. There's an oily stuff that runs through this. So now let's reconnect all these. There we go. Get them on there. Okay. Put them in there. Put them in there. So what I'm doing for your benefit, maybe pleasure, is um, I'm doing a full check and evaluation of an air conditioner. Like I say, I don't get it very often, so I don't know how many air conditioner videos I'll be able to do. And uh, so, there you go. That's fixed. There's nothing more to check on the capacitor. Now, some of you, here, let me mention this. Some of you might have two. Some of you might have three capacitors. You might need to take the nut off to read this the microfarad rating. But get that information, take your meter, put it in capacitor mode, and check it. If it does not read what it's supposed to read, you have a bad capacitor. I like 20 bucks, it's not a big deal. So if you do replace your capacitor, then um, make sure you get the one with the same rating. So the next part of our little um, journey is gonna take us to the control board, which, you know what, folks? I can get to it from up, from up here. I do need to go down, down below and unscrew two screws, and then I think I might be able to bring the whole control board up here and we can play with it. So let me put you on pause. And here, let me, well, on, let me show where we're gonna go. Let me, let me show you this. You're with me. Here we go. Okay. Wait. There we are. See that gray thing right down here? That's the control board we're after. So I can bring that up here where it's nice and pretty and sunny and I can get some light and we'll pull that up and we'll work on it up here because that might also be a problem. Inside of that, you're going to have two relays. One relay for the motor, the fan motor, and one relay for the compressor. And so... If the fan's working, but the compressor's not, we might have a bad compressor relay in that control board. So we'll bring it up here and play with that. All right, you folks. So what I've done is I've just taken those two screws that allow me to bring this up here to the top side where I got better lighting and everything. So we're gonna take this cover off. One more little 
little stubborn screw right here. There we are. Okay. Put that out of the way. And then these will be hot, so be advised. What we're after here is the, the part that's going to shock the heck out of you down below. If you're not comfortable with electricity, don't do this. Um, what I want to get to is that control really down there. But um, more specifically, see this blue wire right here? That's the one that's going to go to my compressor. Okay. So we take our meter, put it on AC. Now what I've done is down below, I've turned the air conditioner on. And if you, I'll plug this in, the air conditioner will come on. It's idiot proof. So, oh, and I just heard the, com the uh, compressor just turned on. I just heard it. So I've got a fan and a compressor. So that was interesting. So let me, um, got my meter there, AC. Uh, I'm gonna go to ground right here. I'm gonna wedge that on ground. And this is the compressor wire. I have 115 volts going to that compressor. Okay, this is my fan. Got power going on my fan as well. So um, as of right now, now you saw how we check the compressor, check the capacitor, and everything work out. And now that's the relay that'll shock you here. Not careful. So um, I have seen where these relays stick. Uh, okay. If you want to really check the efficiency of an air conditioner, it has to run for about 20 minutes because you want to saturate all these coils, and it takes about 20 minutes for it to do that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back together without getting electrocuted. Okay. Um, I'm going to let this run for 20 minutes. If this should start getting cold, you're going to start seeing these pipes wet. Um, and let me go get my flare meter, because that's always kind of exciting to see. And um, put this cover back on. There. I make it idiot proof, so I just make myself a better idiot, right? Now, while we're up here, um, let me talk about a couple other things. These two wires here are going to go to my, my furnace. So if you've seen all my other furnace videos, I always talk about the two blue wires and, and I pierce into those two blue wires and I become the thermostat. Um, so imagine watching, let's say you just watch one of my furnace videos and you, you learned all about the two blue wires. Well, they come up to, on, on this Dometic refrigerator. Ah, why am I calling this refrigerator? On this Dometic air conditioner, they're going to be coming up on these two blue wires right here. So inside of this box is a dry contact relay, and when your thermostat says turn on the heat, that relay is going to close, and whatever's on one wire is going to go back down the other. These are the two wires that go back down the furnace. These wires here are the ones that are going to feed this box 12 volts, plus and minus, and it's also going to feed the thermostat 100 and, or, or, um, it's going to feed the thermostat 12 volts. And on this orange wire, the thermostat is going to feed a uh, a signal coming back, okay, digital signal coming back to tell the control board what the thermostat wants to do. Fan high-low, um, air conditioner, furnace, etc. Of course, we have our AC power. This blue wire here goes to this freeze sensor. Can you see that freeze sensor? The freeze sensor is stuck in the fins. So the freeze sensor, this is going to get very cold. If the freeze sensor fails or it's not plugged in or something, then this thing will freeze up like a block of ice. If you don't believe me, I've got pictures to show you. So the freeze sensor needs to be in the fins. Now you might have, some of your air conditioners might have a little thing on left or right. Um, this particular air conditioner, once it's stuck in the fins, it's reading the temperature of the fins. Um, the thermostat that this customer has is the Dometic SZ1 thermostat. Um, and there is a uh, diagnostics mode you can go in on that and you can actually read the temperature of this probe. So. At this point, I'm going to give the top side a clean bill of health. Like I said, a decision needs to be made on where to start on this. You could have started at the bottom, could have started at the top, could have started on the thermostat. Darren likes to start on the top because I can get a lot of things tested out. And if I'm going to be doing a diagnosis on an air conditioner, I can get a lot more done up here. Yeah, but i got to carry my tools up on the roof. But I really feel I'm doing a better value for the customer by just, you know, my river works is on the scene. Let's check everything. So we check the compressor, the capacitor, the control board. Um, make sure the free sensor's in. All right, we make sure that this, this isn't bad right here. But a lot of you might have this so dirty um, 
that if air can't be, be sucked in. This is the business end of the air conditioner. All this air conditioner is for this piece right here to get cold. Air is drawn up, passed through here, and returned. So this is it. This is this is the whole purpose of the air conditioner, to have air drawn through. Um, the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to dehumidify the air. So any moisture, yeah, if you're down south or anywhere and you, and you, and you reach in your icebox, you take out that nice cold Coke and you set it up on the counter and that can starts to sweat, well, that's the humidity in the air that is touching that cold and it's it's condensating okay so this is going to be cold and it's going to condensate and all the stuff is going to drip so any moisture in the air is going to be drawn in here and it's going to drip down into the drip tray which is this tray down here on the bottom and it's going to drip off the roof well where'd the water come from that was on my roof that's dripping off my air conditioner it came from inside my coach that's the humidity inside my rv um, so the first thing it's going to do is it's going to dehumidify the air just because this is cold and i have humid air coming through and then I have this much space to pass my air through. It's being drawn in from this fan right here. And then I, I return it back into my coach. Um, so if I'm in a very humid environment, well, then these things are going to be dripping wet. And I don't have as much area to cool. And that's why we say uh, your air conditioner can go anywhere from 16 to 22 degrees to drop the temperature, depending on the humidity value. Um, so if all that makes sense. So step one is it's going to dehumidify. then the air being drawn through here is going to cause it to have a, a cooling differential. We call it a delta. Uh, delta T. Okay. So I'm going to put it back down in there. Uh, I'm going to leave you up top for a little bit longer because I'm going to get my flare meter and we're going to look at these tubings over here with that flare meter and see the temperature profile on it. Okay. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, folks. Uh, gosh. I I don't, my, my flare meter, I need to charge them, but what you would see when this thing turns on, it'll probably only turn on for, we're not getting, can you see that at all, or is there a terrible glare? Um, okay, let me just tell you, it's, it's been on for 20 minutes, this is not cold, okay, so therefore we have, th these are not cold, these are supposed to be really, really, really so cold that it's uncomfortable to touch them. This tube right here should, is a little cool, but it's certainly not cold. So now that we've tested... Um, let me move out of the wind. So now that we have tested, the compressor is good, the capacitor is good, the control module is good, and we've let it run for about 20 minutes and it's not getting cold. The only thing it could be at this point is it's lost its refrigerant. Um, now, when they lose their refrigerant, there's a leak somewhere in this system. Sometimes that reveals itself as an oily residue down in that pan down there. And I've looked, I've looked, I've looked. I do not see an oily residue. Um, most, I'm not going to speak for other RV places. My RV works, we do not recharge the air conditioners. I believe it was 97. They came out with a Montreal protocol with the uh, Clean Air Act and all this kind of stuff. If you are going to tap into an air conditioner and recharge the air conditioner, you have to have all these licenses and this equipment etc 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 if you're found doing the work without all these licenses and all this equipment I believe it's like a ten thousand dollar fine or something crazy so I don't have the licenses and I don't have the equipment and I don't have the ten thousand to pay the fine so usually at this point you either hire a an air conditioner company to retap it and refill it and um, or you just replace this top unit right here um, normally when we come across this we just replace this top unit right here the rest of it's all fine um, so at this point, like I said, we've, we've confirmed everything, and if it's not getting cold after 20 minutes, then it's got to have, it, it has to have lost its refrigerant. Um, so that's what we look like we're running to with this thing, but hopefully this was valuable, and um, if it was, give me a thumb up. There's not much more I can explain on these things. Um, but um, hopefully you gain value from the capacitor testing, the compressor testing, the control board testing. Um, but at the end of the day, I think he's lost. It's going to get windy. That should be so cold. You should even see some frost on it, on this tube right here, leaving the compressor, going to the absorber. This is a little cool, but certainly not cold. Um, so I hate when they turn out like this because that's not something I can fix. If it was a control board, I can fix it. If it was a control compressor or the uh, capacitors, I can fix it. Um, and over here, these should be really, really hot, and they're not. So it's a circulation problem with the uh, refrigerant. 
So if you like these kind of videos, uh, subscribe to our channel because we do a lot of them here out here. Uh, thumb us up if this was valuable to us. Share it with some friends. Hopefully I added some value to you on how to troubleshoot your air conditioner. So from Carlsborg, uh, Washington, which is neighboring Squim, and between Squim and Port Angeles, this is Darren with Marvy Works signing off until the next video.